Warm welcome. You're watching Mission 2024. I'm Preeti Chaudhary. A big day today. Um, history etched in four words. Uh, Nari Shakti, uh, the women reservation bill, uh, has been tabled in the Lok Sabha this afternoon. I'm going to get you all the latest first up the headlines. Prime Minister Modi presents the historic Women's Reservation Bill in New Parliament. It will be called Nari Shakti Vandam. Prime Minister seeks consensus from all parties for the passage of the bill. Seven hours allotted for debate tomorrow. Credit war erupts over Women's Reservation Bill. Congress claims it introduced women quota. Amit Shah hit back, says women quota was just tokenism for Congress. India transitioned to the new parliament. Prime Minister Modi leads MPs as they enter the new complex, old parliament to be called Samvidhan Southern Constitution House. New Delhi expels top Canadian diplomat hours after Justin Trudeau accuses India of killing Khalistani terrorist Nijar. India calls the charge absurd and motivated. India today accesses 12 more Khalistani terrorists turned gangsters hiding in Canada who are on the most wanted list. Will Trudeau act or will he continue to pander to his vote back? UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak snubs Justin Trudeau after he briefs Biden, Sunak and Macron on the allegations against India. But UK government says trade talks with India will continue. There's been a big win for forces as they avenge the death of Anant Nag Braves. Lashkar Commander Uzahir neutralized after seven days of anti-terror operations. Well, it's a big day today. Uh, the Women Reservation Bill has finally been tabled in Lok Sabha. What's interesting, viewers, in 1947, the Constituent Assembly deemed it uh, unnecessary. And in 2023, after trials, tribulations over the course of many decades, uh, it was tabled. This time around, it seems, it could very well pass. I am joined right now by Ms. Margaret Alva, five-term Member of Parliament, former Union Minister and Governor, uh, senior leader of the Congress, and importantly, Ms. Uh, Alva, in 1987, you were the one which headed the committee uh, constituted by uh, the then Prime Minister, Rajiv Gandhi, and one of the recommendations at that point of time was a reservation for women where political assertion was concerned. So congratulations, ma'am. It's come a full circle. Thank you. It's a dream come true. Would you take us uh, through the long journey, uh, Ms. Margaret Alva? Uh, 1987, it was something which was brought in Parliament as well today by Adiranjan Chaudhary. Uh, how under Rajiv Gandhi there was, you know, um, at least uh, an attempt to bring in parity where women were concerned in the political field. And it's been a very, very long journey ever since. Will you take us through the trials and tribulation of it? Because you were, you know, if, if I'm not wrong, one of the very few uh, uh, yeah. women, uh, you know, from that committee, which is still around to tell the story of what happened. That's right. It was Rajiv Ji who asked me to put a team together to work on the all-round empowerment of women during a 10-year period. He was talking about 89 to 99, so that by 2000, they would step into the new century with, on an equal footing. So the National Perspective Plan for Women was drawn by us, and uh, we brought it. I took it to the cabinet. Uh, but I must say that I had to really face the brick bats because one of the recommendations was the 33% reservation for women from panchayats to parliament. And uh, everyone was against it. They said there's no way we can allow this to happen. And uh, the, the 
the general strain was कहाँ कहाँ दुनिया में घूम के ये सब ले आते हैं ये तो हिंदुस्तान में नहीं चलेगा it will not work anyway when it was rejected there Rajiv ji called me and said they are not prepared to accept it as it stands but we have to stoop to Kolka so let's start with the panchayats and then started this whole exercise of getting women in the rural areas in the local uh, areas to come out and support this uh, effort at bringing them into local bodies so that constitution amendment we tried to bring in 89 it was defeated by the opposition we lost the government and soon after Rajivji was assassinated his dream unfulfilled but when PV Narsimharaoji's government came we brought the Panchayati Raj bill and uh, as you know the, the constitution amendments both the urban and local and uh, rural local bodies were constituted and women today elected to these bodies are more than 16 to 18 lakhs holding various positions and doing very well but the next step which was envisaged of taking it up to the assemblies and parliament they would not hear of it parliament uh, they felt could not accept so many women and I don't know why they were afraid but uh, they just won't listen we tried I think six times this bill has been introduced in Parliament it has been scuttled like we used to say Parde ke piche sab ek hai. all of them would talk about the women's reservation bill in their manifestos in party fora raise their hands but when it came to the actual passing of the bill in Parliament they were not prepared there was no quorum one time the bill was pulled uh, out of the hands of the law minister Ram Jait Malani and torn in the house we saw various things happen but I am very happy that today a BJP Prime Minister is bringing a bill which was Rajiv J, Congress Prime Minister's dream and I congratulate him and the government for taking this initiative and that in the new parliament the first bill that is being introduced is the bill for the reservation of women 75 Mr. years after independence at least our, our demand is being heard and being acceded to but now you know, that the bill right. will ahead, be passed I presume though I know it will be passed and it will become part of the statute book of the country today when I went through the details I was a little up, uh, shall I say sorry or sad to see that the implementation will be done after the next census which would be any time between 26 and 27 and then the delimitation which will take at least another two years which means not before 29 and this is very disappointing because the next election will come and go don't know what the composition of parliament will be after that and what and who will take responsibility to ensure that this law is implemented successfully Ms. Alva, you know, the lack of political will to subscribe to set patriarchal structures has cut both ways. Uh, your own allies have let you down multiple times, not once. But you do talk about Rajiv Gandhi's dream, but the sheer fact also. And maybe, you know, if you take the politics away from it, uh, Ms. Alva, um, it was stable three times over under the Vajpayee government. More than three times. It, and even the other governments, when it was introduced, it was not passed because we couldn't put the numbers together everybody's manifestos spoke about it 
Congress, Mamta, regional parties, the left parties, everybody was supporting it. But we couldn't get the sufficient numbers because it was being scuttled by two or three parties and numbers were the most important for a constitutional amendment. Correct. Uh, first time it's been tabled by the Modi government and this time around it does look it would pass. But, uh, you know, with what you touched upon, uh, yes. Ms. Malwa, the sheer fact yes. that uh, the timeline of it seems to suggest that we might not see the light of day uh, in terms of uh, it being implemented on ground with 33% reservation, not before 2029. Right. You know, that is if... Uh, if at all the census happens earlier, no, then right. there is a constitutional amendment and we uh, bring in delimitation earlier. We don't know if South parties are going to be on board of that or accept. So it's a long road ahead. Do you see this as an eye wash then? Because ultimately, what is it that we are uh, doing? We're going to pass the buck to the next government and we don't know what the political structure is then. At the moment, at the moment, it is a headline opportunity. It is headlines all over the country. Women are excited. Everybody is uh, congratulating the government. So am I. I am happy that it is at least coming onto the statute book. But let me be honest. When I read the details after the initial euphoria, I said, good God, who knows when and who is going to actually take the initiative to implement it because the implementation is not going to be easy. We will have to have the numbers, we will have to, I mean numbers in to have a government that will be determined to move forward. And uh, well, that's a big question. But once it's on the statute book, I don't think any government is going to amend it or move back. It will only be a movement forward and the mm -hmm. assemblies will have to concur, which I'm sure they will do. Ms. Malwa, uh, Alwa, the, you know, I'm going to ask you two questions, ma'am, before I let you go. But one of them, uh, history stands testimony that uh, through yes. the course of every time this bill was stable, it was the socialist leaders that let it down. Uh, you know, and, and you know who I, all I'm talking about. There's a vast range. Uh, today, where the alliance of your own party stands uh, in the yes. India alliance, there are many political parties which definitely will not be on board uh, with uh, going ahead on whatever uh, the Congress wants to claim is its victory in terms of uh, pushing forth with the Women Reservation Bill. Do you see that as a huge hurdle as well? No, I believe the mindset has changed and on the eve of the 24 parliament elections, I don't see any party standing up and saying no to this bill. After all, women are more than 50% of the electorate. That that the only issue on which there could be a bit of uh, further discussion or maybe amendments is reservations within reservations. Quota within quota, ma'am. That's what you're talking the, about. I was on the joint parliamentary... Yes. I'm talking about... Uh, I was on the joint select committee. We had discussed this in detail. And we had all come to the consensus that in the SCST reservation quota, women would get 33%. That there could be no reservation or quota for the backward classes in the women's bill because it doesn't exist for parliament, right? And that the only way to sort this out is if reservations come for the OBCs or other communities, then we would give them 33% out of, out of their quota. The second issue which was troubling was the question of rotation. It was said that if you rotate, then you know, how will women take their constituency seriously knowing they will not contest again? Our suggestion had been that there should be two consecutive elections which a woman should fight from a constituency and rotate them after that. Because we do believe that many of them will be able to fight as general candidates after 10 years. 
because women have a reputation of being very dedicated and very committed to their constituencies. That's the second. The third thing, which again was the question, now the bill says 15 years, we had said a minimum of 30 years, which means two elections in, I mean, two elections to be fought by a woman in one constituency. So it would mean that two elections and one third at a time would mean 30 years. That I believe now, um, uh, from what I understand, has been reduced to 15 years. Another right. suggestion which is now being propped up is dual member constituencies. I think it's crazy. No ban is going to allow a woman to function as an equal in his constituency. She will be like baggage tied to his legs. Right. And either she gets kicked or she gets kicked out, whatever it is. So I don't think it is at all a solution to this problem. There should be two consecutive terms where she will fight and she is free to contest as a general candidate if she has the confidence and she is accepted by a constituency right. after the two terms. That um, would be, I think, the best solution. But whatever well, still, the pitfalls right. and the shortcomings, it still looks I'm like sure a far dream, at least as of now, emerge. a mirage of sorts, because, uh, Ms. Alba. I'm going to ask you one quick question, ma'am, before I let you go, because there have been many of your ilk, uh, you know, and maybe put politics aside for a minute, who fought the good fight. And, you know, the likes of Sushma Swaraj, Vosiphorus, in support of uh, the Women Reservation Bill. Would you want to recount yes. some of the women in active politics who over the years have stood shoulder to shoulder and tried to push for this move, which has seen a long time in coming? You know, we have had women across parties stand together. We had the human, cha I mean, the women's chain in the well of the house when the bill was towed by some Samajwadi party women. We did do everything together. There was Swara uh, Sushma, there was uh, Renuka Chaudhary. And uh, there were so many of them that I would like to recount. There was uh, Mrs. Bose from West Bengal. Geeta Mukherjee, ma'am. Uh, Let me give you another uh, name. Geeta Mukherjee was the chairman of... The, yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Geeta Mukherjee was very important. She played a very important role as chairman of the Joint Parliamentary Committee. We were so many of us. And when these women of a couple of parties didn't join us, I said to them, Hum aapke liye bhi lad rahe aap kyo nahi aa rahe hai They said, Madam, hum aapke saath hai, par hamare party ke hamare neta log hume ticket nahi denge, hum aapke saath kade ho jayenge to. So you see, there was so much pressure on them, though all these party people were supporting the cause. And right. uh, I believe many of them are gone. But they will be rejoicing with us when this happens. And I do hope I will live to see the implementation when it comes in the next few years. Ma'am, I'm into that. Uh, and uh, I hope, uh, and you see it very, very soon, you know, not even getting to whether you live for it or not. Let's hope it happens really soon. Thank you for joining us and taking the time out and speaking with us. And I would hope the yeah, likes of Sushma so. Swaraj, Gita Mukherjee, wherever Thank they you. are, uh, if it ever materializes, would also be smiling uh, because, uh, you know, this is, this is a big, big development, historic at that. But let's see how it carries further. Meanwhile, uh, the new parliament building was uh, inaugurated uh, on the 28th of May. In less than four months, on 19 September, work started on the new building. And uh, today, business began on the second day of the special session. <music> A new day, a special session, and a brand new parliament building as India rises. At the onset of the second day of the special session, it was time to bid adieu to old. It was the last session at the historic Central Hall. Today onwards, our two houses of the parliament shall have their sittings in the new Parliament House building. We all know that 
This central hall has witnessed transfer of power from Britain to Bharat. I am very happy and enthusiastic about the functions of the two houses of the parliament. Henceforth, from the new building, which is the symbol of new and emerging Bharat, paving the way for the developed nation as envisaged by Prime Minister by 2047. As we bid adieu to the Parliament House and move to the new Parliament building today, I am overwhelmed with emotions and tinge of pathos. We would, of course, be continuing our parliamentary duties in the new Parliament building, but will miss the Parliament House. Members of the Rajya Sabha and the Lok Sabha gathered at the inner courtyard of the old Parliament House for a group photograph. Memories of Indian democracy captured in vibrant colours. आज हम यहाँ विकसित भारत का संकल्प दोहराना फिर एक बार संकल्प बद्ध होना और उसको परिपूर्ण करने के लिए जी जान से जुटने के इरादे से नए भवन की तरफ प्रस्थान कर रहे हैं ऑन दिस मोमेंट ऑफ सकेजन एज वी स्टैंड ऑन दी थ्रेश होल्ड ऑफ एडिंग अ न्यू चैप्टर टू दी एनाल्स ऑफ आवर पार्लियामेंट्री डेमोक्रेसी आई कॉन्ग्रेचुलेट यू ऑल ऑन आवर फिनोमिनल राइट्स वी ऑल आर इंडियड प्रिविलेज टू बी विटनेसिंग दिस हिस्ट्री in the making as we bid adieu to this magnificent parliament building which houses both the chambers of our parliament and this imposing central hall and move to the new one khoobsurat tasveer hai jiska hum sabhi besabri se intezar kar rahe the ab wo pal aa chuka hai and they marched on to the new horizon united in harmony each holding a brand new indian constitution in hand together the parliamentarians of india that is bharat elected representatives of a billion countrymen started the day in the new parliament maadhaniya sadashgan aaj hamare desh ke loktantrik itihas ka ek atyant mahatvapurna din hai jab hum sansad ke naye bhavan mein lok sabha ki पहली बैठक आरंभ कर रहे हैं माननीय अर्जुन मेघवाल जी धन्यवाद अध्यक्ष महोदय द फर्स्ट वर्क ऑन टेबल वॉज द हिस्टोरिक इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द वन ट्वेंटी एट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अमेंडमेंट बिल इन द लोकसभा टू प्रोवाइड फॉर वन थर्ड रिजर्वेशन टू वेमेन ऑफ इंडिया इन द लोकसभा एंड स्टेट असेंबली विद दैट Indian democracy scored its first in the new parliament house bill ko upload kar diya gaya hai nayi technology hai sansad ki aur nayi technology mein aap isme dekh le bill upload kar diya hai